When your extruder gears decide they don't want to be here anymore, dealing with inconsistent layer issues and maybe a bamboo failure or two, all this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 81, it's a dapper edition, I'm wearing a suit, let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here and you want to get better at your 3D printing, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. It's a dapper episode because I just came back from an event that required a suit and tie. So I figured I'd leave it on and wrap a printed tie clip, which fun fact about this was made less than an hour before I had to leave. I couldn't find my regular one. So fired up the army of printers that we have here and made quite a few of them. I have spares as well great file I'll link to it in the description if you guys want to make your own gear tie clip that does actually spin which is always a bit of fun we got some great failures here and how we're going to fix them on the channel but of course we are always looking for your failures so if you are looking to submit some you can slide into those dms email us youtube at 3dmusketeers.com or tag us on twitter using the hashtag print fix we'll take a look at it and see about including it into the episode greatly appreciate all of your support and your support in listening to our sponsor 3D Musketeers. If you are looking to fail less in your printers and leave that problem up to myself and the team here at 3D Musketeers, you can do so by reaching out to us via the links in that description down below to take over your 3D printing and now high-end 3D scanning needs. We are now also offering CAD services should you have that idea up in the old brain box that you're trying to get made real. We can help you actualize that with full art part rapid prototyping CAD services to make awesome every single day. And hey, if you're super cool, and let us do it we'll even turn it into a time lapse and use it on the channel which is always fun as well we are also offering high-end 3d scanning with scanners like the artec eva the artec ray and the artec spider to help you take even the smallest details and make them digital in fact i'm gonna be traveling next friday out to austin texas so if you happen to live in austin and you own a 3d printing business and you want to do a little bit of filming hit me up youtube at 3d musketeers.com we'll see about getting some people scheduled so that we can make it happen actually going to scan the u.s women's soccer team so if you want to check that out, make sure to get subscribed because we will be doing a travel vlog on that as well. But if you are looking to support the channel financially, maybe kick a couple of bucks into that creator fund, you can do so by Patreon, YouTube channel members, or now PayPal options to come and hang out with myself and the entire Musketeers crew. And remember, $10 more gets you into that Discord server where some of the craziness is and you get to have some behind the scenes look at the content that occurs here basically every single day. But enough of me talking about this, like, comment, subscribe, share, things you're supposed to do to help support the channel. Let's move into talking about the fails, Dapper Edition. First up, we got a fail from Facebook, but posted in our Discord by a fan, Devoid Colossus. I have seen this issue before. This is one of those red, dual gear extruder upgrades that people do to their ender threes and it comes with a set of these copper phosphor bronze washers they're technically bushings at the end of the day and you're supposed to put one on the top and one on the bottom and it appears the one on the top has left the building what we have going on here is the actual feeder gear itself digging into the aluminum of the extruder right because these gears are normally made of steel and therefore are much harder than the aluminum extruder body itself. This is exactly what happened to an Ender 3 Pro. I think it was a Pro that we looked at a while back. It might've been a Max, maybe it was a Pro. I forget, we'll card to it so you guys can take a look. It's an old video, but it still checks out. And this was the exact problem that it had. Not only was the gear grinding into the extruder, but the filament path as well had been ground down the same way because over time, even filament will have a problem like this this as well. So be careful on that one. If you do get these extruders, make sure you put these little bushing washer things on both sides or you're going to have a bad time. If you have to choose one, I would put it on the top. Ender 3 under extrusion started off fine, but is getting worse. We have Vanilla Cura low quality 0.28, Chep's good profile 0.28. And we've got what appears to be some sort of crazy Z wobble but also having under extrusion. Now, I don't know what file they're printing and if it is supposed to have 
that waviness to it, but we definitely have some waviness. Let's see what we have going on here. I would agree here that it could be a clog, but it's a clog. It would be consistent. And if you have this many clogs, I don't want to know where you're printing. Certainly not a very clean environment. More likely is that the extruder arm is cracked. On these Ender 3s, the old school Ender 3s, they have a black plastic idler on the extruder and the spring for it is so stiff. It could actually over time cause it to snap, which will give you varying quality during your prints. Now, I normally see them when they crack, it just tends to slowly fail, not just randomly fail and then be good, then fail, then be good. And I can understand why issues like this would have you kind of go crazy. It's not a consistent issue. You're seeing it on your profiles and ones from people that you can trust. What's going on here? I believe that even if it isn't the extruder arm, if you still are running a stock one, it's good to change it anyways. The cost is not very high. The peace of mind is there. It makes sense. But we do have a solution. Saying they replace the nozzle, the PTFE tube, and they put a spacer in the extruder arm to tighten it up and it's printing much better. If you have to add a spacer to give yourself more pressure on something like an Ender 3, you probably actually have a cracked extruder arm and adding more pressure is just adding more pressure to the crack. Yeah, I would check that to make sure it's not damaged because that could be something. Always, if you do have a Bowden printer, especially one that is not all metal, checking to make sure the PTFE tube is clean and free of debris is a very valuable thing that you can do because as that PTFE goes through heat up and cool down cycles, you run into problems where it doesn't always come off right and might end up looking like crap. If you do get gunk in that PTFE, it will create excess back pressure that your extruder will have to push through, giving you more potential for failure. So if you are dealing with inconsistent extrusion, it's not your nozzle from some sort of a nozzle clog. It is not your extruder arm. I would then look at PTFE tubing. It is always good, again, to have spares of that laying around. I like to get the legit cap tubing from Capricorn. It's not that much more expensive than the cheap stuff, and you are getting a better quality product, so it's worth it in my opinion. But you can get cheap quality PTFE as well. We'll link to both in the description down below for you guys if you do want to get bulk of it. We get it in bulk so we can do things like here, where we have a reverse Bowden set up to a heater that is above the printer itself where we can do types of prints that require material to be very dry when you print it something like a carbon fiber polycarbonate potentially F me it's only been here an hour we've got an ender 3 that is letting out the magic smoke and if you don't know what the magic smoke is well, now you know. There is an entire theory regarding the magic smoke. Magic smoke is what powers all electronics because when you let out said magic smoke, the electronics no longer function. And the magic smoke is not a renewable resource. You cannot put it back into the electronics. Once it is out, it is out for good. And all electronics will slowly go through that magic smoke as they age. And eventually you will end up letting it out if you don't maintain your electronics properly. So maintain your electronics, but I can pretty much guarantee you what's happened here. This is a printer that was set for 120 volts but plugged in at 240 volts. Now, thankfully here in the United States, we get the opposite problem. And this happened to me recently when I was doing a house call to fix somebody's 3D printer. I looked at all these different problems for why the bed wasn't heating. And every single time I tried to heat the bed, the entire thing would just turn off. Like it would just short itself out. I grabbed a multimeter, I probed out the bed to see if it was that, but it wasn't any of that. It turned out that the power supply was at 240 volts and we were running it on 120. So it was getting half the voltage it expected. So when it tried to load down the bed heater, it wasn't enough power from the power supply and the power supply would shut itself down. This is what happens the other way around. Let's see if we were correct. Yep. It is. The person who assembled it when I was away put it to American settings, not European. So what can you do here? Always check to make sure that the power supply is set to the right settings before you plug it in. It is why I do kind of like switch mode power supplies on 3D printers that will automatically just deal with this for you, rather than these Meanwell style power supplies that you have to select the voltage yourself. Having that auto voltage adjustment is incredibly valuable 
for starter printers, especially ones where you forget to check that kind of thing. So if you are working on a brand new printer, make sure that before you plug it in, you check to make sure your voltage is set correctly so that you don't end up like this. But unfortunately, outside of really having the right skills and understanding how to work inside of a power supply, power supplies, even at this level of magic smoke, can retain enough voltage to not only hurt you, but kill you. Do not mess with power supplies unless you are a trained professional. Seriously, I'm not messing around. We don't need to see this in the news. Please don't do that unless you know what you're doing. It is best to just outright replace it. Quite frankly, the amount of time it's gonna take you to find the problem child, replace the components, test, you can just buy a new power supply for 30 or 40 bucks, replace it and move on. Call that a very cheap lesson and hope that it stopped at the power supply and didn't also fry the motherboard of your printer. Next up, a fail from my buddy Baloo, who is going through some heartache with his Revo. He's got a heater core here where one of the thermistor wires has completely broken, which means it's stuck in the printer. This is one of the downsides to a hot end system that is a cold change nozzle. If you don't unload your filament, you now have filament caught in your nozzle if something like this was to happen. Now you could cut the filament, unscrew the nozzle, and pull the entire assembly out. I would even recommend grabbing a big lighter or something to just give it a little bit of heat. Heat it up so you can soften the filament then pull it out manually. But in a case like this, you could also just strip that wire back that we see here, the frayed wire, and use an alligator clip to connect it. How to avoid these things in the future though is to make sure that you have enough extra wire. In kits like the Revo, especially ones that are the Prusa edition, this is a Prusa Mark 3S that we're looking at here. They come with exact length wire. So make sure that you give yourself enough slack so that you don't run into a situation like this. You could also, if you do have a little bit of extra slack, pull some slack out, cut the connector on the other side and direct solder everything. But future you will hate current you when you have to go fix it the next time. So just look at repinning it if you need to. You could look at changing out the connector if you wanted to as well, but I believe those are just standard DuPont connectors that you can buy off the shelf, get the pins off the shelf, and repin it yourself. It's not that big of a deal, but it can be a frustration when you've already spent close to $100 on a hot end like the E3D Revo 6. It's a nice hot end, but that is the one downside to it is it's not as user serviceable or user replaceable as something like the V6 would be where you can just put in a new heater cartridge and they are relatively affordable. A new heater core is pretty expensive. That's part of the risk that you take when you play with the bleeding edge. Sometimes, you get cut. New to FDM printing, is this a belt tightening issue? Had clean layers when the X1C first arrived. This is a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and they're having issues with some lines showing up on the part. So first off, it's white filament. I hate white filament. White filament has a tendency to show problems that really just aren't there. While a really well-tuned in bamboo can get beautiful prints, even with white filament, I think this is more to blame on the white filament. Now, we do still have some other anomalies on the print definitely need to be working on our support settings because that layer that is first after the support material definitely doesn't look great we've got a recommendation from the community that setting the flow to 88 percent or 0.88 can solve those problems i have no clue i've never dealt with this particular issue myself but it does look like some form of under over extrusion i would try replacing the color of the filament with a different color and see if this issue still persists or if it is something that is white filament based. If it is just white filament, I'm sorry, it's white filament and that's just the way white filament is. I don't think it's gonna be a small clog. Generally speaking, white filament is one of the few that you can't hide BS in. Black filament, you can hide a bunch of random crap in the filament and never see it. White filament on the other hand, pretty hard to hide any issues that you would have in it. Things like contaminants and all that because it'll be pretty obvious in the filament itself. And we can see that it is happening on the last two filament spools that they have and they assume any sort of clog would have either melted away or gotten much worse but they're going to check well yeah you could have cleaning filament it could be something like that you might want to clean the z rods with fresh lube i don't think any of that is realistically something that you should be doing on a printer of this price point 
caliber, whatever you want to call it. So apparently there is an awful layer consistency channel in the Bamboo Lab Discord with 10,000 plus replies of people having similar issues with no solutions. And this person saying that it is an amazing printer, but some QC issues that have to be addressed. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. It is an amazing printer when it works. And for those of you that are looking for an update online, it is running. Finally got it on the network properly connected and all of that. It took five factory resets of the printer, three clean installs of the software, and for some reason, that time the printer magically decided to work. I don't know why, but it does. So it's been fully segmented now, and it is updated and everything so that haters can hate me later. I've talked about this being a thing that there are QC issues with these machines. This is going to be with any new product, you're going to see this problem. And I think it is happening more often than Bamboo wants to admit. In talks with staff members at Bamboo Lab, they're stating that they have a sub 1% return rate. And that's pretty good. To be clear, that's actually pretty good. But I don't know what that means for people that have put in tickets, that haven't gotten solutions, or have simply been told, we can't help you. Only time will tell if these problems get resolved or if it just continues to get worse. I would think that this is more gonna be from the filament itself being a white filament than the printer. But this is quality that I expect out of an Ender, not one that I expect out of a Bamboo. First time using a 0.6 nozzle, first layer looks great, but after that, everything looks under extruded. It's a Sobel SV05, they're using Cura. They updated the nozzle size in the printer settings and updated layer height to 0.4 millimeter and the wall width to 0.6. Is there more to do? Yeah, so that's a really, really big change. That's a bigger wall width. And I would look at going to at least 0.65, if not 0.6. 7 for something like this. That can be something that you do later on. 0.4 millimeter layer from 0.2 millimeter layer, that is quite a bit more plastic that you're extruding. And if you haven't increased your temperatures as well, and you've left your speed the same way, you're gonna have a bad time. So make sure that if you are going to be going to a larger dial so that you, one, set all the settings correct in the slicer, and it sounds like they've at least getting to that point if they haven't already to adjust your temperatures accordingly. You will need to add more heat the larger your nozzle gets if you want to maintain temperature because again, your nozzle and printer are capped at flow rate. Above a certain flow rate, your printer's just not going to work the way that you expect it to because it cannot heat the filament adequately to get to where it needs to be. So make those adjustments, mess around with the heat, and see if that works out well for you. I have a part printed on my P1P. The bottom is currently facing up in the photo, and on one side, the overhang's printed badly. What could be the reason for this? That is the auxiliary fan. In the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and P1P series, and these are the current printers that Bamboo has available, they have an auxiliary fan, which is a big blower fan that blows air across your prints, except it only blows from the left side to the right side. I would guess that this is facing the left side of your printer and this is facing the right side of your printer. In a case like this, there's not much you can do. You can slow down your print speed. You can look at reorienting the part. So maybe you get better cooling across the entire part. So maybe rotate it 90 degrees, but this is going to be a thing when you start running high speeds. Remember, the filament still has to cool down or it's gonna have problems. And in this case, the filament was not getting cold enough between the layers. Yeah, the X1 Carbon is that fast and the P1P is just as fast. So looking at something like this, it's absolutely a cooling issue. You can look at adding an auxiliary fan, which can be as easy as like a desk fan that you point at the part. It's jank as hell, but it actually works. And before we wrap up, I know, a lot of you are going to want my opinion on the Mark IV, the brand new Proust printer that was just announced. Make sure you get subscribed because Wednesday's video will be all about the Mark IV, my opinions on it, where I believe it stands in the market. I'm not going to be looking this dapper, unfortunately, because it is very hot in this suit, but I did just come from an event. I thought it would be fun to film a Print Fix Friday in a nice suit. That's all I really have for you guys today. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of these failures, especially the ones where we're dealing with a filament issue or a temperature issue. These are ones that seem to pop up a lot more often than other things that we see here in terms of failure modes. So I'd love to know what we could maybe do to look at producing either a video or a Sears. Maybe we work with the 3D Print General on his next iteration of his book to deal with some of these problems directly because I want to see less and less of these, oh, it's a temp issue, oh, it's first layer issue, and more diving deep into the failures, why they occur and how we can solve them moving forward. That's all I have for you guys today on this one. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one where we looked at upgrading an Ender 3 Pro 
Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon, YouTube channel member, and now PayPal channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to kick a couple of bucks into that creator fund, you can do so by clicking those links in that description down below and joining one of those tiers to help support the channel. Greatly appreciate everything that you guys do to make this kind of thing possible. Right below me will be the entire Printfix Friday series where you can take a look at failures and how we look at fixing them. And right next to that will be the printer maintenance series. Stay tuned. We have some awesome content coming. Maybe a special video tomorrow. That's it. I'll see you guys down in those comments and the next one. Take care.